live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 19. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco in Moscone South. We're on the ground floor here, Google Next. Google's Cloud Conference. I'm Trevor, Stu Miniman. Dave Vellante is also hosting. He's out there getting stories. Our next two guests, Dana Berg, Chief Operating Officer of SADA, and Chris Lehman, Head of Engineering of SADA. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for joining us. We're here on the Thank ground you. floor. Thank you. This is exciting. I, f I feel like a, a movie star right here. It's, it's game day here. All the tech yeah. athletes are out there. If you, look at the, if you look at the show, look at the demographics. Hardcore developers, yeah. a lot of IT leaders also here. Cloud architects. A lot of people trying to figure it out. We've heard the keynote, Google's bringing a lot to the table. So what's new with you guys? You guys recently sold your Microsoft business, going all in on Google. Talk about we that are, relationship. We are. Uh, this is a uh, brand new day for SADA. Um, the energy around this place, uh, where we are in the, in the market, and, and, and where we are with the expanded attendance here, has actually reaffirmed our business strategy to go all in with Google. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but SADA has been around for almost 20 years. Uh, historically have always been leaders in bringing people to the cloud, even before there was really much of a cloud. We were a, you know, an, a pilot partner within Microsoft and Google, and had a great thriving Microsoft business, but an even bigger Google business. And you know, we looked at the tea leaves, we looked at where we wanted to be and, 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 and align with a, with, a, with a company that shared our mission and values, and it was a clear choice. Uh, we, we chose Google, uh, we made a very specific and deliberate act to, to sell off our Microsoft business so that we could take the horsepower of all of our engineering staff and apply them to Google. It's interesting, you know, we've, we've been around for 10 years doing theCUBE, we've got a lot of events. I mean, Dave Vellante and Stu and I have been around for 30 years covering yeah. the IT, you guys yeah. 20 years. You guys have seen many ways of innovation come and go. Yeah, we now, have. You're, now you're going all in on Google. What, what's it, what is it about this wave right now that made that decision? What do you guys see? Yeah. You're seeing something early here. Yeah. Expand on, on that, give us some color commentary because yeah. there's a wave here, right? There and is a lot a of people are trying, it's a combination of things. I mean, we saw the client server thing, we saw that movement, yeah. we saw the internet, we saw the web, mobile, now it's cloud. What's the big wave, what are you guys riding? I think, I think there's a couple of things and I think it's unique to, to, to philosophically how we think of our, our real special relationship with Google. Uh, there is a momentum, right? And not to quote like a Bernie Sanders, but it seems like there's a revolution going on here, right? And, and you know, I think you know, what we see when we look around and, and we hear conversations and even with our customers, the way that we're all winning together is because we're winning the hearts and minds of the people inside of our customer base that are actually the ones responsible for inventing yeah. and the ones responsible for building. Um, so when we're in boardrooms and when we're selling and along with Google, we're, we're, we're talking with developers, we're talking with designers, we're talking about people that are actually driving the vision for these business applications. We're not always talking to the CIO down, like some of our other competitors seems to have only been able to sell that way. We're talking about the people responsible for not only constructing it, but maintaining it. So that revolution is there. These, these folks are bubbling that up and they're seeing the real value inside of Google. And, and what is that value from our point of view and why did we make such a bold statement just to stick with Google is, and, and we saw Thomas today echo this, I think there's very few cloud providers that are bold enough to actually lead with the fact that we want our customers to have full choice. Yeah. Whether you're using GCP or not, we want to build, architect, and manufacture a product offering that allows you to keep your stuff in your data centers, move your stuff to AWS. That power of choice is really not like what we've ever heard anywhere else. And then on top of that too, you got right. an application renaissance, right? right? A whole yeah. new way of coding, infrastructure that's programmable and yeah. going away. Yeah. I mean, if you think about what that does to the existing infrastructures, they can now mix and match and re-architect everything from scratch and accelerate the app movement. Well, the that's absolutely true, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that there are managed services in the cloud, which makes it dramatically easier to build applications, of course, so there's no question about that. Some of the uh, offerings on GCP are particularly attractive uh, for our clients, particularly the uh, managed Kubernetes service. Um, that's where we're seeing perhaps um, most of the interest that we're seeing, like that's a very common theme. 
Also the ML stack is an area that uh, our customers are very interested in. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Chris, can you bring us in some of those customer environments? You know, one of the things you hear, you know, most customers, it's, I've got my application portfolio, modernizing that is pretty challenging. There are some things that are kind of easy, some things that take a lot more work, but, you know, migration is one of those things that makes most people that have been in IT a while cringe because there's always the devil in the details and something goes wrong once you've gotten 95% done. You know, what are you seeing? What's working? What's not working? How's the role of data changing and all of that? I think uh, migrations are usually more complex than they at first appear, and so um, even with best intentions, thinking that uh, customers can just move their workloads seamlessly to the cloud have actually, in practice, been more challenging. So some of the areas that um, we find challenges are around data migrations, especially in the context of zero downtime. Um, that's always uh, more difficult than with applications. So that's definitely an area that we're, um, we're spending a lot of time working with our customers to uh, deliver. And, I, and I, just to add to that, I, I have to keep reminding myself of the name, but obviously the Anthos announcement today uh, sounds incredibly intriguing as a lower barrier of effort to actually migrate. Um, you know, our customers have been trying to really absorb and take a hold of Kubernetes and containerized methods for a long time. Some are having a harder time doing it than others. I think Anthos promises to make that endeavor much, much easier. Um, and I, and, I, and I, you know, I think about as we leave here this week and we go back and we re-educate our own engineering teams as well as our customers, I think we might see some you know, highly accelerated project timelines go from here down to here. Yeah, and and, the, and yeah. the demo that Jennifer Lin did was pretty impressive. I mean, um, using the con running inside of containers, whether it's VMs and then having service meshes on the horizon yeah. coming to the table is going to change the implementation delivery piece too in a massive way. I mean, you got oh, code, build, run on the cloud side, but this, this kind of changes the equation on your end. Can you guys share the um, insight into the, that equation? Because you know, Google's clearly posturing to be partner friendly. You yeah. guys are a big partner now, you're going all in. This is an interesting dynamic because you can focus on solving customers' problems, all this heavy lifting goes, kind of goes away. Talk about the impact to you as a partner when you look at Anthem, Anthem Migrate in particular, some of these migration challenges yeah. with containers and Kubernetes. Seems like it's a perfect storm right now to kind of jump in and do more faster. Yeah. Well, it's certainly very uh, interesting. We'll, we'll want to take a really hard look at it. Um, I mean, the very, very cool announcement. Moving to containers in the source prior to the migration obviously solves a lot of challenges. So for that reason, it's, it's uh, definitely a move forward. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, you know, we always talk about in this industry the, the acceleration for consumption. But really that's a poor way of saying, probably what we should be saying is an acceleration of value. So we're constantly in this battle to try and deliver value to our customers faster. That's what our customers want, right? And, and, and in essence, we see Anthos as being potentially a big game changer there so that you know, our CIOs that we're talking with can show to their various stakeholders that they are making very good proactive moves into the cloud at lower barriers of entry, right? Yeah, so you brought up the, the ML piece of, of Google. Wondering if you can help share a little bit on that. When I think back two years ago, you know, data was really at the core of what a lot of what Google was talking about. Yeah. I was actually surprised not to hear a lot of it on the main stage this yeah, morning. Right. Um, but you know, AI, ML, what are you doing? What are your customers doing? You know, what, 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 you know, does Google have leadership in the space? Google uh, certainly has leadership in the space. Uh, our customers, I think, um, relatively universally think that their ML stack is, is the strongest uh, uh, among the competitors. Uh, but I think in practice what we're finding is there's a lot more urgency as far as just literal uh, data migrations off of their data centers into the cloud. And I foresee a lot more uh, AI and ML work um, as uh, more uh, move in. Yeah. So you might, uh, in our booth here, not to give a plug, but we've got a booth down at the end with a, a full-fledged racing car. Uh, just to talk about the, the, you know, the, the art of the possible with AI and ML, um, our engineering teams in the race teams that we sponsor, they're there, the driver's there. You should go down and talk to them. 
we've taken all of the race telemetry data for the last six months and all of his races and practices, we've aggregated that data all into GCP, run AI and ML algorithms on it to provide his racing team some very predictive ways that he can get better and that team can get better. And so I'd invite just anybody that wants to kind of go there and take a look at, you know, even if you're in banking and if you're, or if you're in retail or if you're in healthcare, yeah. take a look at some of how that was done because it's a very, very powerful way to where, to answer your question, head and shoulders down why yeah. Google is actually accelerating and exceeding in AI. And one of the things that Thomas Kurian showed on stage was the recent hackathon they had with the college students yeah. with the NCAA data of the, of the game yeah. that just finished and throughout that experience. This is a core theme of GCP and now Anthos, which is getting data in and using it easily. Yeah, right away. And scaling at a scale level that kind of seems unprecedented. Uh, so this team seems to be the application, the new differentiator. I think it is, I, you know, I, I think that announcement, obviously the, the big three takeaways for us, you know, certainly scale, unmatched, uh, certainly speed and migration with Anthos. Um, if I could highlight one other, um, I was incredibly pleased with, well I've been pleased since Thomas's arrival, arrival in general by bringing an enterprise class strategy within inside of Google that I think are going to respond well to our enterprise customers. Um, and part of enterprise class is also making sure that their partner community has amazing enhancement programs that really incentivize those partners that are actually in the full managed services space from cradle to grave, lifetime customer value. So we're very excited about even further announcements this week that no doubt have been inspired by Thomas to try and really take advantage of their partner community that are, that are in the business of cradle to grave support of customers. So you feel yeah. custom, co comfortable with Thomas? Oh man. He's talking to a lot of customers, he knows the enterprise. Yeah, we've, we've, well, had a, we've had an opportunity to meet with him. Uh, we've, 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 we've had some shared customers that you know, have had a great you know, privilege of, of, of getting to know him and, and support us and, and collectively them. And he knows the partner equation pretty well. And the enterprise. Without a it, doubt. It's about partnering, because there's the monetization, the share, go to markets together. Talk about the importance of that, and what's it like to be a partner? Yeah, without a doubt. Again, you know, his embrace of the open source community that you saw today, really taking advantage of highlighting partner value is wonderful, but I think, I think, I think Thomas, above anything else, knows that Google needs to scale. They need to scale, and then they have to have breadth, and they have to have depth. Yeah. And you know, to get to where Google needs to be over the course of the next two, three years, it's wonderful, it's refreshing, yeah. it's 100% accurate that Google knows and Thomas knows that the path to do that is via partners. Uh, partners that share in Google's vi vision, that are 100% aligned to the same things that Google is aligned with. And you know, I think, that's why I'm so thankful to be at SADA, lar large in part, because all of the things that we care about in terms of our customer success as well as Gus Google's success, we all share that, so it's a great trifecta. It's a ground floor opportunity, yeah. congratulations. Guys, talk about your business. Yeah. What's going on, you got some new offices I heard you opened up. What's going on in the state of the business? Obviously the Google focus that you're excited about, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. They're at yeah. the beginning, I think, I called Google the dark horse, I think, you know, with the tech that they have and the renewed focus on the enterprise, building on what Diane Green had put foundationally. Yeah. Thomas is meeting with hundreds of customers. He's so busy, he doesn't have time to even come on the queue, but he'll come on soon, but he's focused. This is now a great opportunity. Talk about your business. What's the state of the union there? What, yeah. tell, give an update. I can, I can take that one, if you don't mind. Go ahead. You can add poetic color if you want. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, we're entering a new, new, new journey for SADA in light of renewed focus, renewed conviction to Google. Um, we are investing uh, more than we ever have into the, the common belief that Google is the one to beat in terms of momentum drive and ultimately winning the hearts and minds of, 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 of who, who we've talked about. So over the last four months, we've opened five new offices uh, in New York, Austin, Chicago, Denver. Uh, our headquarters is in Los Angeles and just recently, uh, we just opened a brand new office in Toronto so we can really help our Canadian customers uh, really uh, see the, the, the same type of white glove treatment we provide those customers in the States. And so 
Uh, that's why, well I wasn't earlier, but I'm walking around with the Canadian flag. We're very excited about the presence that we're going to have in Canada. It's Toronto, I always blow it. I call it Toronto, being the yeah. American that I am is Toronto. Was a couple well, I'm glad you said it right. So, okay, <laughs> good, good. On the engineering side, obviously you guys are on the front lines. There's also a sales development, there's also a customer relationship. Engineering side, I'm sure you guys are hiring. There's some hard problems to solve out there. Can you guys share some color commentary on the type of solutions you guys are doing? What's the heavy, what, what solutions are you solving? Problems that you're solving for customers? What are the key things that you got going on? On. Yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of cloud migrations, a lot of uh, web and uh, application development, custom development, and data pipelines. I'd say those are really the three key focus areas that we're, that we're working on at the I'll moment. I'll tell you one other thing too. Um, so, we, we believe that we want 100% customer retention, always. Um, and, and that goes above and beyond an implementation. Uh, so the other big area of investments that we're making is a, is, is a, in a, in a whole revamped technical account management team. So for those of our, our uh, GCP customers that have had the privilege to, you know, that we've had the privilege of working with and for, uh, uh, we are building out a, a team of individuals that will, well beyond the project, stay with that customer, work with them weekly, monthly, quarterly, and try to always find ways to expand and move workloads into the cloud. Uh, we think that provides stickiness. We, prov we think that provides ultimate value to try and help our customers identify where else they can take full advantage of the cloud. And it's a fairly new program. And in and, and large in part, I just want to thank Thomas and the partner team for new programs that are coming out to help us so that we can actually reinvest in things that go you know, throughout the life cycle of the customer. So, Awesome. Very, very good stuff. Dana, Chris, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. We'll check out your booth, the cars there with the data. Yeah, Bring that data exhaust to the table, <laughs> <laughs> pun intended. Yes. Analyzing with Google Cloud, Anthos, good, good commentary, thanks for sharing. We really appreciate sure. us being on board. All right, thanks great. for having us. Cube coverage here live on the floor in San Francisco. Google Next 2019, this is Google's cloud conference. Customers are here, a lot of developers, more action, live on the day one of three days of coverage after this short break, stay with us.